All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop 2024. Today, we're gonna to really take a look at Select and Mask, but before we get to that, I'm gonna show you how to change brush size. Now, there's multiple ways to change the brush. All right, so let's take a look at how to change the brush size in Photoshop. Now, the brush tool, surprisingly, in photography, is one of the tools that you'll end up using a lot. And not only do you need to change the size, but you also need to change the softness of the brush because this can help, especially when working with masks. So let's take a look at some of the different ways to change brush size and then I'll kind of tell you what I use and why I use it. So the first one is the simplest way. You just kind of come up here, you click on this and right here you have a brush size. Now the problem with this is until you go back into here, you don't see the brush size. So I can see it's real small, it's that center one, not the blue circle. So let's go ahead and make it bigger. You can see it's bigger, but you don't see it until you get back into this location. Then right under it that we have here is our hardness. So we're making the brush harder and we're making the brush softer, okay? Now, this works great. You can also rotate your brush here. You could also bring up a panel window over here, which does the same thing. I'm gonna show you some different ways. Now the next way is a better way, but in my determination, it's not the best way. So let's go ahead. So this is the bracket keys. And if you look on your keyboard next to the letter P on the right, there's two brackets, all right? The right bracket makes your brush bigger each time you tap it. The left brush makes it smaller. Now you can't see this, and this is what I don't like about it, but if you hold the shift key and you tap the right bracket, it's making your brush harder and if you hit the left bracket and if you hit the left bracket key it makes the brush softer. So here I can kind of show you this. I'm just going to hold shift and tap this all the way down and then we'll click and you can see we've got a soft brush and then I'm going to hold shift. You can kind of see it moving and doing some things and now I'm going to click it and you can see we've got a hard brush. So it is changing that softness. Now the problem is we can't see what it's doing when it does it. So this way is the, my favorite way. And I'm gonna tell you, the Mac way and the PC way differ in this process. For a Mac, you're gonna hold the control and the option key, okay? So control and option key, and you're gonna mash them down and not let them go. Then you're going to left click, okay? Now you see that brush. If you go up, it makes it softer. If you go down, make it harder. Now this is holding the left click down. So I'm holding Alt, I'm holding Control, I'm left clicking, and I'm holding that down the whole time. So soft, hard. The cool thing is you can see it happening. Left makes it smaller, right makes it harder. So I can make it softer, bigger, smaller, harder. All right. So this is my favorite way to use the brush because you can see what it's doing and I'm really quick. I don't really have to think about it anymore. In the beginning, it's gonna be a struggle because yes, there's lots of buttons to hit. What you're gonna do on a PC is you're gonna hold your Alt key and you're going to right click and then you're gonna do the same thing. So you're holding the Alt, you're right clicking and then you're going up, down, left, right. I can't show it because I'm on a Mac, but generally that's what's happening. It, the movements are exactly the same, it's just the toggle keys are different. All right, so there's a variety of ways to work in Photoshop, and I'm just gonna come up here and go filter, revert. Revert just takes it back to the way it looked in the beginning and gets rid of everything that I've done. So we've learned that you can use the selection keys over here. Now, there is something different in the quick key for it, on a Mac is Command Shift R, most likely on a PC it is Control Shift R. And that is to go up here, and there's multiple ways to get it, just like everything, you can go select, select and mask, there's the quick key if you don't know what it is, or you can go to any selection tool, and most likely it's gonna have select and mask. Now, what's gonna happen when we bring this up is it brings up this new window, all right? And so over here, we've got the quick selection tool, the old hair refining or edge brush. We've got a brush tool, meaning that wherever you just paint or apply, it's gonna turn it into a selection. The object selection tool, the lasso tool, the move tool, and the zoom tool, all right? Also, if we come up here, notice we've got select subject. So I've got this right here. I'm on cloud because it does a better job. So if I wanted to select the subject in this image, it's gonna be pretty easy. I just click 
select subject and it does a pretty good job of selecting the subject out. Now, sometimes when you have like soft fuzzy edges, you need to click refine hair. All right. I don't know if we need to do it in this one, but we're going to click it anyways. And I can't tell if it did anything or not. Um, I'm going to hit command Z. Yeah, I can't tell if anything happened or not, but usually for hair, we'll take a look at another image here. We've got that over there. We can do it. Now up here is the quick selection tool. I could have made a selection like that, but select subject works usually up here. This will spin when you're using the object selection tool. This is a toggle to when you hold in, it will toggle the preview mode. We've got some setting options here. Right now we're in lasso, but we could go to the rectangle tool. What's more important is over here. Over here we've got view modes. Right now we're in this kind of opacity overlay image where it shows the red overlay. But if I wanted to look at it on a black and white, we would do it like that. Personally, I like overlay. You can test them out to see which one you look at. All right. So up here we have some other images where we can show the edge and show original high quality preview, whatever you want. Um, you can control the opacity of this red, all right? Down here, we have edge detection. So this is detecting the edge. You can kind of paint over it to do it. So when you're using this brush, like let's say it didn't perfectly get the edge, we can come over here to edge detection. Uh, we've got smart radius where it automatically um, tries to decide what radius that you think it should use, or you could manually do it. We can refine the mode by using a color aware or a object aware. In this case, we're not going to use color. We're going to use object. I can control my brush size. And basically I would paint over something and it tries to recognize that edge and make a better selection. Okay. Down here we have global refinements. So this will change the selection right now. This is selected. So if I want to smooth this edge, I would slide this right here. Uh, not something you would probably normally do at this point. What that would help be helpful for is if you feather something and then you want to smooth it, or if you feather something and then you want to make the edge a little harder, you can increase the contrast. And then last thing that I've told you, we're shifting the edge. So right now it's selected the edge of the bird. We can shift it in, which would be this way. And you can see it's moved that selection in. And that helps sometimes where you get like a halo around something or you can shift it out where it moves it this direction. You can see it's doing that. And so when we do those, we can feather those edges and you can see the difference in it. So if I take this and increase the contrast, it's gonna make that outer edge part harder. Or I could smooth that out by sliding that that way. Truthfully, I've never really used smooth, so I'm gonna slide that back out of it. Sometimes I do use feather. Remember, when you're using the uh, quick selection and the object selection tool, it doesn't feather your image. Also, if you used lasso tool before this and you came in here, but you had your feather at zero, you could feather that lasso in this location, all right? So we're going to clear this because we're not gonna use it. And I'm gonna hit select subject again. All right, so we're back to where we had the object selected. The last thing that we have are these output settings. And right here we have something called decontaminate colors. Um, I've seen this when you use a green screen and there's a person a lot of times under their neck or on the outer edges, uh, you pick up some of the green from the green screen if the people are too, too close. This can help with that. But generally what we're looking for is how do we want to output this? Do we want to output it as a selection, a layer mask, a new layer, a new layer with a layer mask, a new document, or a new document with a layer mask. Usually, I am using either a layer mask or a new layer with a layer mask, okay? Right now, we're gonna do it as a selection because we're just beginning, but later on as you do more advanced stuff, doing it as a layer mask is usually more helpful. So we're gonna click OK, and then boom, this will simply, then you click OK, and boom, it just outputs as a traditional selection. And I could come down here and add a layer mask to it. And you can see we've cut out that background. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this image using selected mask. So I'll just come up here and hit selected mask and nothing is selected. 
Now, the easiest thing to do is just go ahead and hit select subject because that's really all that's in here. So if you look at the area that is white, all right, it's selecting all that area that we see right here. The problem is it's like semi-translucent and it doesn't do a good job of selecting the little bitty hairs. And if we did this and we outputted it, it would look horrible and not look good. So they used to have this egg edge selection tool and basically you would come up here and you can use this for hair or really anything. We're gonna go ahead and put smart radius on it and then you just kind of paint over an area and you're like, hey, it did a better job of selecting in that area. So I'll come in here, click this again. And now we've got a better selection around that hair. Now, this also happens sometimes around the body or somewhere, especially if you're wearing like a sweater or something fades into the background, doesn't get it perfect. You can use the edge selection to say, hey, pick this area up. So right in here, we've got a little white spot and I'm gonna go ahead and make my brush smaller just so I can say, hey, this area, I want you to make a selection. See, it missed it. And it could do it right in here in that location as well. So we're getting those little bits. You can also now just come up here if you have hair and click refine hair. And you can see it did a better job, but it didn't get it perfect. So in this case, I might then need to come back in here with the edge selection tool and just kind of paint over these areas and say, hey, get this spot as well. And then you could output, and in this case, we'll just do a layer mask so you can see. And if I put this on a different colored background, you really see what it looks like. So let's move this below. I'm gonna hit shift delete and we will just make this 50% gray and it's not gonna look good. And there's multiple reasons, but you can see here where it didn't select it. But here it's doing it semi-transparent. I have another video where I go into this aspect of how to fix this around here and backgrounds. It's actually pretty easy. It does take a little bit of time. But for right now, all we're really looking at is that selected mask. So that's what your refined hair and your edge detection can help you do inside of selected mask. And that is how you adjust your brush and you select and mask inside Adobe Photoshop. Please give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.